I gotta say, after about a year's time of being stuck at home during the pandemic, things are finally starting to look up a little bit in terms of eventually being able to travel again sometime soon. Instead of keeping an eye out on rising case counts like we were this time last year, nowadays we're looking out for rising vaccination counts, and we're looking ahead at the future and thinking about whether these mass vaccinations will allow us to travel internationally again sometime not too far from now. And so I wanted to start doing this series of videos roughly once every month or so to keep track of the progress towards the recovery in global travel from a Canadian perspective. Which destinations are going to be opening their doors to Canadians? How is the vaccine rollout going to impact those timelines? And what are the travel restrictions looking like in terms of quarantine and testing requirements and whether those requirements might be relaxed over time? In these videos, we'll be summarizing some of the most important news items that you need to know in terms of travel coming back. And I'll also be offering you some of my impressions about these developments from month to month as somebody who's very excited to start traveling again as soon as possible. Now for this edition in March of 2021, we'll be talking a little bit about the vaccine rollout here in Canada and globally. We'll be talking about what the vaccines mean for international air travel. We'll be talking about the future prospects for both international travel and domestic travel. But we're going to start with a recap of the travel restrictions that we have here in Canada for anybody who might be traveling right now. If you're traveling right now, hopefully it's not for leisure purposes, but maybe it's for work, education, or family purposes, and you're planning to return to Canada, there's actually a whole host of travel restrictions that you must face upon your return. Whether you're entering Canada by air or through the land border, you do need to present a negative COVID-19 PCR test that was taken within 72 hours of either boarding your flight or presenting yourself at the land border. And you can be denied boarding for your flight if you fail to present a negative test. And then upon landing in Canada from your international flight, you'll be asked to take another COVID-19 PCR test at the airport, and then you'll have to undergo a three-day hotel quarantine while you're waiting for your test results in one of the airport hotels near the airport before heading back home to complete the rest of your mandatory 14-day quarantine period. Now this hotel quarantine program has been an absolute disaster ever since it was first introduced back in February. Travelers have reported difficulties actually booking a hotel over the phone prior to their flight back to Canada. They've had to make their own way to the hotel from the airport, often using public transportation, and they've often reported difficulties accessing food and water at the quarantine hotel, having to go down to the front desk and speak to the front desk staff, and thus exposing themselves further to the elements instead of isolating and quarantining. In the words of one traveler who spoke to CTV News, it was a boondoggle complete pandemonium. So that's an uncomfortable reality if you're going to be returning to Canada anytime soon. Now there's two ways around the hotel quarantine. One is to return via the land border with the US. Now you still have to present a negative COVID-19 test within 72 hours and you still have to quarantine for 14 days at home but you can do that quarantine at home without having to spend three days at a hotel at great expense. Now, the other way to bypass the hotel quarantine is by brazenly breaking the rules and going straight home from the airport instead of going to your quarantine hotel. Now, you might get fined by the regional police authorities for this behavior, but that fine could end up being cheaper than the cost of the quarantine hotel itself. Not to mention the fact that you won't be interacting with hotel staff if you go straight home and quarantine at home for 14 days. Now, I'm not going to openly encourage you to break the law here in this video, but I should mention that it is an option that some Canadians believe to be the right one and have chosen to pursue. There's no word on when Canada's hotel quarantine requirements are set to be relaxed. Personally, I think it's quite likely that they'll stay in place throughout at least April as a means to discourage international travel, but a lot of it will also depend on the vaccine rollout. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. COVID-19 vaccines, they're coming and they're coming quickly, but perhaps not quite as quickly as many of us here in Canada would prefer, especially compared to other developing countries around the world. Many of my friends in the US, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East are already getting their first doses of the COVID vaccine, even though they aren't necessarily essential workers or vulnerable populations. But it seems like here in Canada, the timeline is still about July to September for the general population to get vaccinated. Recently, there was a little bit of good news coming out of Ontario uh, 
where it seems like the vaccine rollout might be a little bit earlier than predicted, and anybody who wants a vaccine might be able to get one around early summer with a target date of June 20th. But it does seem that to a certain extent, perhaps due to our less effective vaccine acquisition efforts in the early stages, here in Canada, we might have to wait and watch our neighbors to the south and around the world get vaccinated first before we as a population are mass vaccinated ourselves. And that does mean that there may be a little window of opportunity for Canadians to travel to, let's say the US, to get the vaccine there after the US has fully vaccinated all of their residents, but before Canada has started mass vaccinations up here. And indeed, that's even possible right now, with California, for example, not requiring you to be a resident to get the vaccine within its borders. In my opinion, I think most Canadians would do well to remain a little bit patient and get the vaccine here in Canada in due course, but hey, if another country has an oversupply, if they're welcoming you to get the vaccine as a non-resident, and if you're comfortable with the travel costs and the travel restrictions upon coming back to Canada, then I don't see why you wouldn't go for it. Now, the broader question here is, once you actually get the vaccine, then what? Can you get on any flight, travel to any country in the world? How do you show that you've actually been vaccinated in a way that's consistent across every country, across every airline? Well, we don't actually have clear answers on that just yet, but we should get clarity on it very soon, thanks to a concept that we're all about to become very familiar with, the vaccine passport. The International Air Travel Association, or IATA for short, is pioneering a new app called the IATA Travel Pass, which is gonna be launching at the end of this month. Now, the IATA Travel Pass will be seamlessly integrated between governments, airlines, laboratories, and travelers, to allow vaccinated travelers to show their proof of vaccination and cross national borders in a smooth and easy fashion. The IATA Travel Pass is currently being test driven by 14 global airlines, and since it's gonna be officially launching at the end of this month, we should have more information about it by the time we do our next monthly update in April. And then there's also the question of when and how governments around the world will accept proof of vaccination as a way to reopen their borders and allow travelers back into the country. And here in Canada, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has confirmed that Canada is among one of the countries who are actively exploring this option. It's definitely looking like we'll need proof of COVID-19 vaccination to travel internationally to most countries over the next few years, at least if we want to bypass the strict testing and quarantine requirements. And so I definitely expect us to have a little bit more clarity on how a vaccine is going to translate into a vaccine passport by the time of our next monthly check-in. Now, after talking about the vaccines, let's talk about the actual travel that's coming up. Now, just like last year, I have a feeling that most Canadians are gonna be more comfortable traveling domestically rather than internationally over the spring and summer, at least before we're all mass vaccinated and before our travel restrictions are relaxed a little bit. Even though domestic leisure travel is still discouraged, I have a feeling that many Canadians are gonna be unable to resist a quick road trip or a hop across the continent, especially as the weather gets warmer and as our case counts continue to stabilize. And especially with the expensive hotel quarantine in place, I feel that most Canadians are gonna be hesitant to embark on international trips until at least the fall of 2021. But when that time comes, when it's time to travel internationally again, which destinations are gonna be the first to open up their borders? Well, you can actually consult our dedicated resource for travel during COVID-19 over at the Prince of Travel website, where we keep a master list of which destinations have opened their borders with or without testing and soon to be added with or without vaccinations. We do try to keep the list as current as we can and we're looking to update it on a weekly basis if possible. Now you'll notice that right now, a handful of countries in South America, Europe, the Middle East and Africa are in fact open to Canadian travelers. And I think that's gonna be the long-term trend too in terms of which countries open up their borders first and which ones open up later. For the most part, it's the countries outside of the Asia Pacific that have been more eager to open their borders. And I think traveling to the Caribbean or Central America or South America, Europe, the Middle East or Africa is gonna be more realistic towards the end of 2021. On the other hand, countries around East Asia, Southeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand have proven a lot more conservative when it comes to the idea of reopening their borders and welcoming tourists. 
And I think traveling to those parts of the world for most people, even if you get vaccinated, is only gonna be realistic around early 2022 at the earliest. But no matter where you choose as your first destination after the pandemic, there's no denying that the recovery in global travel is going to be a matter of when, not if. And indeed, the Globe and Mail recently published an article saying that there's gonna be a phenomenon of revenge travel with so much unprecedented demand for travel after everybody's been cooped up at home for more than a year. So, welcome to Burundi. What's the purpose of your trip? Revenge. Don't forget that Aeroplan has extended their free changes and cancellations until April 30th of 2021, meaning that any booking you make by then, you can cancel after the fact free of charge. And indeed, it's gonna be a much better idea to use points to book your future trips rather than paying cash because of all the difficulties around getting refunds for cash tickets at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful to round up all the important travel stories you need to know as we look ahead at future travels, hopefully not too far from now. If so, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we discussed today. What do you make of Canada's hotel quarantine restrictions? What do you make of Canada's vaccine rollout? Would you go somewhere else to get the vaccine if you had the means to do so? What do you think about the idea of a vaccine passport? Are you looking forward to using your vaccine passport to travel the world over the next few years? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Whether you're entering Canada, Canada, whether you're entering Canada, just click the subscribe. It's going to, be, <clears throat> it's good. It's very much going to be a luxury monthly update in April. <gasps> anyway, I, <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat>